Jade is a typical Nigerian mother who lived in a small city in Nigeria. Her only daughter, Ibukon, was forced to live with a constant rejection of any spouse she brought home. Jade carried the weight of tradition, expectations, and her own deep-seated fears into every decision she made concerning her only daughter, Ibukon, even though she always claimed that her domineering tendencies were born out of love, there was something Ibuko never truly understood about her mother. For years, Daddy had interfered in every aspect of Ibuko's life, particularly in her romantic relationships. No man ever seemed to be good enough for her daughter. Ibuko, who was in her early 30s, had grown used to her mother's disapproval every time she introduced a new boyfriend. Jerry would begin a usual routine of intense questioning, unmasking perceived flaws and outright rejection. She would start by making snide remarks about the financial status of the victim's men to unnecessary judgment about their character. In fact, Jerry found fault with every suitor Ibukun brought home. You are too good for him, she would say dismissively, as if her daughter had picked this man from the gutter. And when Ibukun asked her mother why she felt so, she would always come up with something bad to say about the man, even if it means she has to lie. After a while, Ibuku began to notice a pattern. She found out that her mother's rejection was not always about the men themselves, but more about the simple fact that they existed in her life. If any of her men dared to stay, despite the initial disapproval, Daddy would go out of her way to prove their personal histories, only to use the information she gathered to sow seeds of doubts in Ibukon. The suitors would leave, one by one, feeling unworthy, and Ibukon's heart would break a little more each time. Ibukon finally reached a breaking point when she met Bukumi, a 35-year-old businessman with a kind heart. After just a few months of dating, she knew she wanted to spend the rest of her life with him, but the thought of introducing him to her mother made her shiver. How could she face another round of Jadis' interrogation and manipulation? The mere idea of watching her mother probe every man she brought made Ibukun's stomach turn. So, she decided that this time, things would be different. Ibukun confronted her mother one evening, her face determined but her voice shaken. Mother, I'm going to marry Ibukun, and if you don't let me, I swear I'll kill myself. Her words hung in the hair, heavy with the weight of desperation. As usual, Daddy did not flinch. She only stared at her daughter with an unreadable face and as if calculating her next move. Days passed and Ibuku locked herself in a room, refusing to come out or eat anything her mother offered her. Daddy, though deeply worried, remained unshaken in Ibuku's presence. It wasn't until almost a week had passed that she finally gave up. Fine, Jade said one morning, her voice dripping with disdain. You can marry him, but don't expect me to stop asking questions. I will definitely ask him questions because I want the best for you. Ibukun was happy that her mother had finally decided to let her get married to the man she loves. She hugged her and thanked her. Weeks later, the wedding preparations began, but as they prepared, Jade continued to show her disapproval of Bukumi at every opportunity. She would ask Bukumi endless questions about his past, his family, and even how he manages his finances. While at it, she also made sure to belittle him in front of others whenever the opportunity arises. Bukumi took Jade as his cross to bear. He believes that she would come around and understand him better as time goes on. So, Despite a constant meddling in his business, the wedding went on, and for a brief moment, Ibuku felt that she had just won a victory. She had fought for her happiness, and she had married the man she loved. Ibuku felt a sense of peace and happiness she hasn't felt a long time ago, and she was convinced that she wasn't making a mistake. After the wedding, the couple retired to their new home, but as they returned to what should have been the beginning of their life together, there was an unexpected surprise. Jade arrived at their new home with suitcases in her hands. When Ibuku opened the door, she looked at her mother with shock written all over her. Mother, what are you doing here? Ibuku asked, a confusion quickly turning into frustration. 
I'm coming to stay with you, Jade said simply, rushing past the newlyweds and making herself at home. Ibuko couldn't believe it. She had fought so hard for this marriage, and now her mother was coming to live with her, invading her privacy and meddling in her marital life. She never imagined a marriage where she would have to live with her mother. She knows her overbearing nature and wouldn't want her to cause problems between her and her husband. As if she knows what Ibukun was thinking, Jade quickly added, Don't worry, I won't interfere in your marriage. I just want to make sure that you're okay. But mother, I don't think that's important any longer. You know, Bukumi loves me so much and he wouldn't do anything to hurt me. I think you should leave mom. Jade pretended like she did not hear Ibukun. Where is the guest room, please? She asked, staring from Ibukun to Bukumi. Bukumi collected Jade's luggages and he showed her the guest room. That night, Ibukun and Bukumi had their first argument. Since Ibukun tried to convince her mother to leave, but she ignored her, Bukumi had to convince Ibukun to let her stay. She is your only family, he reminded her gently. Maybe she's just having a hard time letting go. Moreover, you are her only child and she may be scared of losing you. I'm sure she would get used to not seeing you around after some time, but we have to let her stay until she's able to deal with that. Ibuku was not happy about this, but she reluctantly agreed. Deep down, she knows something about the situation doesn't feel right, but she consoled herself that it would be a way of adjusting to married life and dealing with the issues of sharing a home with her husband or anyone. But as the weeks passed, Tensions began to rise between Ibuko and Bukumi. The little argument that started as disagreement soon became violent confrontations. Each time they fought, Jade was there, stepping in as the peacemaker. She seemed too calm, too present in their marriage, but Ibuko could not see it for what it was. What Ibuko did not know was that her mother had been working behind the scenes, causing problems in her marriage in the most sinister way. Jadi had cast a spell on Bukumi, using a dark manipulative force that bound him to her in secret. While she pretends to help the copy with Gonsal, she is leading them towards destruction. And with time, she began a secret affair with Bukumi. At this point, no matter what Ibuko did, Bukumi would always complain. Ibukun would cry for days, wondering why her once sweet and loving husband had turned against her. She knew something wasn't right, but she can't really say what it is. Months passed, and the once loving marriage had all but collapsed. Ibukun could not understand why everything was going wrong so quickly, why Bukumi had become so distant, and why every time she tried to communicate, it would always end in anger and misunderstanding. Five months into their marriage, Jadi finally announced that she was leaving. I have done all I can these past few months, she said, a voice serene. I don't think I can continue seeing you two argue endlessly. It really breaks my heart. Jadi packed her bags and left. Bukumi tried to make her stay, but Ibukun did not say a word. She has a feeling that peace may return to her home if her mother leaves. Unknown to Ibukun, her mother was already carrying Bukumi's baby, and she couldn't wait for her to find out. Two weeks later, Bukumi too left without saying a word. Ibukun's world fell apart. She did not understand why she was abandoned by the only two people she loved so much in the world. She called Bukumi on many occasions and begged him to come back home, but he would hang up the call every time. She finally understood everything one afternoon when she went grocery shopping. She saw her mother at the grocery store heavily pregnant and that was when she had to face the horrifying truth about the event that happened in the past few months. At first, Ibukun thought she was saying things, but when she followed Jadi back to her home and confronted her, she began to understand that her mother had lied to her for many years. As Jadi entered the house, Ibukun knocked on the door. Jadi was surprised to see her daughter on the doorstep. Is this why you've always ignored my calls? You never bothered to check on me after this series of text messages and phone calls because you're pregnant? You did not even care, even after I told you that Ibukun left home too. Jade looked at Ibukun with a calm that made Ibukun's skin crawl. I suppose you deserve to know the truth, Jade said, her voice cold and detached. I am not your mother. 
It becomes art stopped. The woman she had known her entire life, the woman who had raised her, was now telling her that everything she knew about her existence was a lie. Your mother died giving birth to you, Jade continued. I'm your mother's younger sister, and I was forced to take care of you. Because of you, I never got to live my own life. I was robbed of everything. I could not have a family. I could not have a husband because I had to raise you. So I made a vow that you wouldn't have happiness either. It is one of the reasons why I kept rejecting all the men you brought home and got pregnant for Bokomi. It becomes Anne's trembled. You, you took Bokomi from me? Of course I did. That is part. I couldn't stand seeing you happy. Not after all you took from me. I put a spell on him and now I'm carrying his child. Ibuku felt like her world was shattering into pieces. She collapsed into the chair behind her, her hands and legs shaking continuously. Everything made sense to her now. The constant rejection of her suitors, the interference and the manipulation was all because Jade, her aunt, had been consumed by a twisted sense of jealousy and vengeance. Please, Ibuku begged through tears. Leave Bukumi for me. Let me have some of my life back. I love him so much. But Jade only shook her head, her face hard and unrelenting. I will never let you be happy as long as I'm alive. Please leave my house. Broken and devastated, Ibuku left that night and disappeared into a new town, far from the chaos that had once been alive. For weeks, she cried herself to sleep. The pain of betrayal caught him deep into her heart. But even in her grief, she knew she had to move forward. She had to survive no matter how much it hurt. Months later, Ibuku was finally moving on and settling down in a new location when she received an unexpected call from a hospital. Daddy had gone into labor and was suffering complications and the hospital needed someone to sign off on a cesarean section. At first, Ibukun refused. She is no longer family, she told the nurse. But as the reality of her sister's death loomed over her, Ibukun rushed to the hospital, unable to carry the guilt of Jade's death and her conscience. She signed the necessary papers, and hours later, a baby boy was born. As she looked down at the newborn, Ibukun felt a strange mix of sorrow and relief. Jade, weak and frail, confessed that Bukumi had left weeks before. He had found the pulse she used to cast the spell on him and disappeared without a word. With tears in her eyes, Jade apologized. I blamed you for everything, but it was all my fault. I destroyed my life, not you. Ibuku forgave her sister, even though she knew she could never allow Jade back into her life. After leaving the hospital, she went back to her new home, determined to start afresh. It was in that new town that Ibukun unexpectedly ran into Bukumi again. They spoke and over time, the pain of the past began to heal. Without the weight of Jade between them, their love rekindled and they quietly renewed their vow, this time without inviting Jade. They began their life all over again, leaving behind the darkness that had once nearly destroyed them. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to enjoy more interesting African folk tales. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.